Today, we're gonna learn something cool. You probably already have access to this and don't even know it. And the best part is that it works on Windows or Mac and even on your mobile phone. We're talking about free, practical, easy, remote access to any computer as if you're sitting right in front of it. All you need for this is a Google account, a compatible web browser such as Edge or Chrome, and a computer to remote to. Now, if you don't have a Google account, you can go to accounts.google.com, click create account, and you are on your way. Once you're done, join back with us for the magic. As a disclaimer, if your Google account was provided by your work or school, this feature may be disabled, in which case you will want to go to accounts.google.com and create your own. And for my IT admins, I'll put some resources for managing this in the description. Now that we all have accounts, we can go to remotedesktop.google.com, which I'll provide a link to in the description. Our first time visiting the website, we may get a page like this. Just go ahead and click access my computer or share my screen. Now, we have three options on the left. The two we care about are remote access and remote support. If grandma needs help, we use remote support. If we want to have persisting remote access to a device, we use remote access. So here we are at the computer I want to remote to. We'll go ahead and click remote access on the left side. We will ignore the pop-up on the bottom right and click the blue download button. This will prompt us to install the Chrome extension to our browser. We'll click the button to install that extension. After doing so, we should have an option to install Chrome Remote Desktop to our actual device. If you do not see this option, just refresh the page and it should be there. Here's our device. We'll go ahead and name our device. After naming the device, we'll set our pin. Please don't make this pin simple. If you leave your account logged in somewhere, all somebody will need to do is guess this to gain access to your remote device. And that's it. It's that easy and it's free. Let's try it. Now that everything is set, I'll sign into that same Google account on the device I want to access this remote computer from. So here's our device. Let's click it. We'll enter our pin. Now, this is my home device in a test environment. So I'll check the box because I don't want to enter the pin again for this device. If your antivirus stops it, you may need to add some exceptions or exclusions in order for this to work. Details in the description. And there we are. Isn't that sick? Stick around if you want to see how it looks on the iPhone. If we click here on the right, things get pretty cool. We've got a bunch of options. So let's log in and check it out. The option for disconnect is self-explanatory, but it doesn't log you out. So make sure you log out before you disconnect. Otherwise, you might leave your remote computer unlocked for anybody to walk up and gain access to. We've got screen sizing options at the top. If you're having graphics problems, this is so practical and nice. As you change these video codecs, it actually explains to you the performance impacts. So cool. I wouldn't imagine you'll need high quality color via remote access, but if you do, it is an option. I will assume, however, having this turned on would decrease performance. Frame rates are also adjustable and impacts described just like the codex. Now you may ask, Warren, what about keyboard shortcuts? Well, Chrome Remote Desktop will take most shortcuts, but not all. If you'll see, I can control shift escape for the task manager, but I can't control alt delete because it sends it to my computer instead of the remote one. So let's fix that. If you hit configure keyboard shortcuts, this is so cool, and press control or any button really, we get a list of buttons we can press in combination with this one that we just chose. So here we see delete as one of those options. Let's try it. I chose control, so I'll click control delete and we've got it. Now, careful of this next option, it just might be a trap. Just joking, but it might feel like it. If you click this option and find yourself stuck, that's okay, just click escape. However, if you're in full screen, you might notice that the escape button will not work. Instead, you have to hold escape until you exit full screen, and then you can click escape to exit. I hope that saved some of you some frustration later down the road. If you have multiple displays, you'll be able to choose from them here. Upload lets you choose a file from your computer to put onto the other user's desktop. And download lets you choose a file from the other computer to put into your downloads folder or whatever other folder you've specified for downloads from your web browser. And I'm not sure how much this next option will matter, 
because they seem to be moving everything to browser only anyways. So what about if we want to help out grandma? And what does support look like on the iPhone? Well, if we can walk grandma to this page, she can click the blue download button, install the extension, refresh the page, download again to get the actual installer, run it, and then refresh the page one more time, and then it should say generate code instead of install. And after she hits generate code, you can type that code into your device, which will allow you to remote to hers. Refresh the page, Grandma. You've got this. In all actuality, these might be a lot of steps that can cause some frustration. If Grandma has a Windows device, you may find Quick Assist to be a more practical approach, as it has practically the same functionality, but it's already installed and easier to make the connection with. With that said, there is some functionality that the Chrome support option is going to have that Quick Assist does not. Once we attempt to connect, Grandma will get a screen asking if she's sure she wants to share her screen and she'll just need to click yes. Something to note about the remote support option is that every 30 minutes, the user on the other end will have to reconfirm the sharing of their screen. So depending on the length of the task you're doing, even if she doesn't want to, grandma might have to sit in front of the computer until you're finished. Also, the remote support option does not offer the ability to interact with UAC prompts like the unattended agent will. You will want to add the device to your account if you want to be able to elevate privileges. So how does this look on iPhone? You can download the phone app, which is probably going to send you to the website. Or you can go to the website directly because they will be removing the phone app at a later point. On our mobile device, we'll see here is the machine that we've added. And if we went to the support section, there's a space for grandma's code. You go grandma. Now for the fun part, let's launch the session. Now that we're in, you'll see things are a bit small. We can use our fingers and pinch to zoom. If you'll see, it zooms to the mouse, which can be a pain in the butt. But really, if you just drag the mouse one way or another, it'll pivot the screen. You can place the mouse in what you would like to press and double click. And from here, we have the option where we can send text or on the left hand side, we have an option for the keyboard where we can type live. This will also give us options such as hotkeys. And if we'd like, we can completely hide the keyboard by pressing the icon up top. If we want to right click on something, we can press and hold. If I'm not mistaken, at one point there was an icon up top next to the keyboard. That was a finger icon and gave different touch options. So if you do see that, it should have different descriptions and is solely related to the way you maneuver around the screen. If you want a cleaner look, you can click the pen on the top, which will remove all the icons. And we also have the three dots, which gives us all the menu options that we had before on the desktop version. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.